Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about three texts from um, an AS science case study. Um, it was uh, an assessed task, look, task looking at the depletion of the ozone um, in the atmosphere. And one of the things they were assessed on, one of the things I was looking for, was use of a range of different sources and referencing of those sources and being able to discuss um, the reliability and even think about the validity of those sources. I want to start by about a short piece of work. Um, she's used full in-text referencing throughout, so she's put the numbers in square brackets and then at the end of the text the numbers will refer to a specific source. She's used full URL um, addresses, so the full website address, so if I want to go and look at that website I can. Um, she's used a good range of sources and although it's all in one piece of text, she's taken details from a number of different sources um, and used them well. And she's used sources that come from a wide range of places. So she's used a couple of university sources, she's used some .gov sources, uh, but she's also used you know, wiseguy.com or wisegeek.com, which is clearly someone sort of who's interested in that area collecting information. She's used sort of a Wikipedia resource, which obviously anyone can write on, so not just academics. Um, this can be useful for A-level students, for GCSE students, because instead of reading whole academic papers and trying to sort of summarise them and take the key information out of them, someone has already digested that information and then written it up. Whether it's completely correct on Wikipedia is something for the students then to think about. But if they have an academic source and something that is someone's blog or Wikipedia type thing, then they can compare them. Um, so she's done some good referencing, she's used a range of sources. The other thing that she's done that's quite nice is she's taken a column in the table to include some information about what might make these sources reliable or not reliable. Some of them she's written the date when they were last updated or the date when they were written. Sometimes she's written who the author of the, the piece of work, the, the website, the web page was, um, and said whether they're a scientist, who they work for, um, or whether it was just a general um, person writing for their own um, enjoyment. Um, she hasn't taken that any further, she hasn't looked any further in her, but she's just given information. So I now want to look at Ron's report, which is a, a, a much extended version. She's done a lot more um, pages of information, again thoroughly referenced, lots of in-text referencing, um, used that very, very well. And then as we get through the report, we find we get to the table of references. Again, she's put the numbers, she's put the referencing, so it's very clear for me to read through the report without getting bogged down looking at URLs. And then I can go and have a look at the web pages she, she's used. She's used a wide range as well. She's used a number of .orgs, um, she's used a number of .govs, she's used some university websites. So she again has taken this range of um, sources um, to look at the same type of information. So again, she can look at someone's digest of an academic paper and look at maybe the academic paper itself to take that range of information. She's not talked about reliability in her table, but the, she then has taken a couple of paragraphs or page and a half to talk about her most reliable website and her least reliable um, website that she's looked at. Now, a lot of the information that's in that was the same that Tanya had on her table. So it's a longer way of doing it. The table and just writing by the website what the date it was written and who wrote it is a much more visual, much shorter way for you to see that information. What Saffron has done that's taken it further is she then compared them. She said, this one was written most recently and written by a scientist and is not for a biased website or whatever, and has then given a good reasoning of why something is reliable or why it's not reliable. And that shows that she has an understanding of what reliability is in a reference and how she can choose the more reliable sources to um, write her report. Um, she's tried to talk about the idea of validity and sometimes she's got it right and talk about how a website is valid for this study because it covers the same thing. Sometimes she's got a bit confused and said a whole website was not, not very good and not valid just because there was a couple of paragraphs that were relevant to this study and a lot of stuff that wasn't. Um, she could have said that those paragraphs were valid and therefore she's used them and the rest wasn't so she hasn't used them to show a better understanding of the validity of the information that she's taking. Um, the final piece of work I want to look at is student three's um, work here. Um, she's taken a shorter bit of writing again of similar length to Tanya's she came to me when she had done a first draft of this and she had left the full URLs in, in the text and that really broke up the reading of it and so you get somewhere and you'd be like, oh, there's the web address. Instead of that, she's now put the numbers in, she's used this in-text referencing system, which is, it, it makes it clearer for the reader to read the report. 
but you can still see exactly where she got her information. She's used far less sources. She's used uh, two sources, one off the university and one uh, an American education establishment. So she's used two only academic references and sources, if you like. Um, that means she hasn't had the chance to look at other general sources where people maybe have taken lots of information on this subject and digested it and put it as somewhere where she can get some general information. And um, The thing that she has done that is an improvement on student one and two is that she's taken um, all of the pictures she's used and she said where she's got them. So she's referenced the pictures she's used as well as the text. Now obviously that means she has not stolen them, she said where they've come from, so she's not plagiarised anything. Both student one and student two said where their text came from, but they forgot to say where their pictures came from. And obviously that's still stealing someone else's pictures. You, you, you need to say where they've come from to avoid any kind of plagiarism. Um, she's not managed to talk about reliability or validity of her sources at all, and that's pulled her down a bit. She's lost some marks in understanding about other scientists' work because she's not talked about whether these were reliable or valid sources. Um, and I think that's about all.